Hey guys, it's been a while since I last made a tutorial and I recently got a new microphone as well as some time away from work and different things. So I figured I'd go ahead and start by making a tutorial. Uh, one thing that I should have done a long time ago in the very beginning was make a tutorial on how to customize the interface in Cinema 4D. A lot of times we find ourselves continually going back to a certain tool or command that's buried somewhere within a submenu and going to it over and over again uh, after a while it becomes a little annoying and it would be a lot better if we could just take that command or tool and place it somewhere here in the interface that all we need to do is just click it once to get to it rather than clicking through a submenu to another submenu to find the tool over and over again. So here I have R13 loaded and by default uh, you can see that a lot of these icons have changed as well as the menus, the submenus. Uh, versus R12 and especially 11.5. So what we're going to do is go over some uh, different ways that you can make palettes, toolbars, and different things like that in order to uh, make the interface a little more easier for you to use. So what we want to do is go up here to Window, Customization, and we want to go down here to Customize Palettes. Okay, so this is going to bring up the Customize Commands. And by default, it should have enabled edit palettes. But if it's not, then you need to select that there. Uh, make sure that is checked. And you notice that now these palettes now have a blue outline around them. Uh, and that is signifying that now they are editable. You can grab these and drag them anywhere you want to. So what we want to do is we want to make a toolbar up here at the top. And let's just say for this example in this tutorial that uh, we want to do something along the lines of modeling tools. So first of all, we want the extrude tool. So instead of digging through this huge menu of all the different tools and commands, we can go up here to this filter and we can type in extrude. Now here are the different extrude tools. We have the extrude here. So what we want to do is we want to make a new palette. So let's click new palette. Here's our new palette here. We want to grab this extrude uh, icon and we want to drag that over here and release it and let it go. So the next thing you want to do is maybe perhaps an inner extrude. So here's the inner extrude or extrude inner and we'll drag that one over here as well. So let's just say now we want something a little different. Uh, maybe we want to put a different command in here. Uh, let's just try a matrix extrude and let's search up here. Let's see what would be another command that we would use. Let's try bevel. There's the bevel tool. Okay, so you can see basically what you can do here is just type in what you're looking for in the uh, filter search parameter, and then that tool or command will pop up. And you can just uh, click on it and drag it over to your palette. So now what we want to do is we want to place this up here into a palette, but we want to make it a tab. So what we want to do is click on the palette here on the very left here. We want to right click on it and we want to choose tabs convert to tab. Okay now we can click this tab and we can click it and drag it. Actually what we need to click and drag is not the palette itself but we need to click and drag these little vertical dots on the left hand side. So click those and we'll drag those up here to the top. And what we need to do is probably go back and choose tabs convert to tab again there we go and now we can right click on that and choose rename and then we'll just give this a tab a name modeling tools and we'll click OK and there we go now let's just say we want to make additional tabs so we'll go and uh, create a new palette and this time around instead of putting in modeling tools we'll do something like maybe thinking particles or, or maybe some type of MoGraph. Let's try MoGraph. So we'll type in MoGraph and how about we do the cloner. Drop in the cloner. Okay, let's try something like the tracer. Try the fracture object. And maybe we'll do the most line as well. Okay, so that gives you a rough idea. So now what we can do is just drag this uh, little 
these little vertical dots again, click that and drag it. But this time, instead of dragging it up here, drag it over on top of the current tab that's there and then just release it. And that will create a brand new tab uh, just to the right of it. So now we have our new palette here. Let's right click and choose rename. And I'm just gonna call this MoGraph. And now we can go between the two tabs. And then if you wanna create a new tab, just just uh, do exactly what we've been doing. Just go to new tab, uh, new palette, uh, drag your icons in, and then drag those little vertical dots for the new palette that you made over the top of this uh, current tab that's here, and that will create the new tab for you. Now, another thing that I like to do is create a vertical tab with a couple of commands in it that's over here that would be vertical uh, just to the left of the object manager. So I'm going to create a new palette. And I'm going to find just a couple of tools. One of them is going to be the split command. Another will be the optimize. Let's see, another one would probably be delete, connect plus delete. There we go. All right, that's uh, good enough for now. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to choose, let's see, I want to change the orientation. That way it makes it vertical. And then I'm just going to click on these and drag this over here to right there. And then I'm going to choose edit palette here. I'm going to deselect that. I click off of that. And now I'm just going to rearrange these windows back to where they were by default. Okay, now if you don't want this here, you can actually click and drag over to there. That way it'll give you more room to have uh, more of these icons in your vertical palette. And then when you're done, all you need to do is go to Window, Customization, Layouts, I'm sorry, not Layouts, but we want to go to Save Layout As. That will take you over here and we, you just choose, uh, just give it a name, click Save. And then you want to go back and choose it as save as startup layout. That way, every time you launch Cinema 4D, your new layout will be uh, automatically launched by default. So if you're curious as to what my default layout looks like, this is what my layout here looks like. I have uh, some commands over here, uh, just to the left of the object manager. Then plus I have a couple of tabs up here at the top. I have turbulence. I have some Cactus Dan plugins and the Nitro Blast. Okay, so that about wraps up this tutorial. Hopefully it's given you an idea of how to go through here and customize palettes, make new tabs, and just overall customize the layout so that you can have the commands and the tools right here in the user interface, uh, right here just to click it once rather than having to dig through menus over and over again, which gets very annoying. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.